We have on the line the front runner in the Honolulu race for mayor, broadcasting executive. Well, I guess I should say former broadcasting executive. He's now entered the world of politics, Rick Blangiardi. Good evening, Rick. Can you hear me, Rick? Unfortunately, Rick, we're having some trouble with this phone line. Let me talk to the control room here. Can uh, we co correct that on our end? Can you hear me now? Now we got you, now Rick. Now we got you, Rick. Okay. Okay, I put it on speakerphone. You're outside my ear, but this is good. Anyway, good evening, Joe. How are you? Well, I'm terrific. I think you're doing, though, even better than I am. How does it feel to well, be the front runner? Well, I will tell you, I feel uh, very encouraged in the moment, but especially very grateful. I've had so many people work so hard all these months to put us in this position that now you get to this moment in time and it becomes reality. It's a bit surreal, but nonetheless, it's something that I really hope for. So, and to have you on this phone with me at this time is also very special. Well, we go back a long ways, back to the days uh, when you were uh, a football coach at the University of Hawaii and I was a young sportscaster, but we're talking ancient history. I think the Jurassic era that was. Something like that, yeah. Uh, well, listen, Rick, I know you've done a lot of work to get to this point, but now after tonight, it's going to be you and either Keith Amamiya or perhaps Colleen Hanabusa. But uh, how are you feeling at this point with what's left to be done? Well, there's a lot of work. You know, it's going to happen in a very quick way to, to be successful in the general election. Uh, and we're actually set to begin meeting tomorrow on a lot of our plans. But right now, I kind of want to savor the moment and be reflective, if you will, of not only all the effort that went on to get me where we are, but also about where we are. I mean, here we are today in the first day of a new set of restrictions. This pandemic looks more daunting than ever. You know, by the hour, by the day, we keep hearing new announcements. It's so difficult to predict, you know, what we might be facing come January 2nd if we're fortunate enough to get into office. So it's just, right now, it's a kind of a combination of things, Joe. It's, it's about working really hard to be successful in the campaign, all the while putting up with all of this unprecedented change an impact from COVID-19. It's like a double whammy, if you will. Do you have a general yeah, feeling, yeah, Rick, Rick, over uh, about these restrictions that are being clamped uh, down here in Hawaii? Are you generally in favor of them, or are you of the mind, you know, it's time to let individuals take responsibility for their own actions and back off the restrictions? How do you feel? Well, that's a good question, and I've tried not to second guess anybody in public office because they're, they're there, whatever. But I will tell you this, I've said for some time here that we need to be able to figure out a way to take care of our health, but also take care of our small businesses as well. The, you know, the small businesses are the backbone of this economy. More than 95% of the people registered in small businesses at DBED employ 20 or fewer people, you know, and yet as we work through, I want to be very sensitive to safety issues. God knows we've talked about that. We're keeping our borders closed, but we've got to find a way to get ourselves going with our smaller businesses sooner rather than later so that people have a chance of surviving in this. The uh, headline, yeah, headline issue outside of COVID-19, I think, would be on most people's mind, the rail. There's been so much pilikia about that with, is it going to go all the way to Ala Moana? We're going to stop before then. How do you feel about rail, Rick? Well, I've been pretty candid about this. I ended up taking what sounded like a contrarian position to the other candidates. But pre-COVID, I had always been very supportive of rail transit. But, but the reality of, of what COVID has done to our economy, first of all, we have no tourism. There's no GET. There's no TAT. We're going to have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people out of work. And the impact of that in and of itself is tremendous. But if you stop and think, about the rail. Here it is, years delayed, billions of dollars over budget, under federal investigation. And now, you know, with that said, they built the easiest part of rail first. The more difficult, the city center segment is about to happen at 4.1 miles. It's a bridge through downtown Honolulu, if you will, down the Dillingham corridor. The likelihood of that coming in on budget seems more than remote, not the least of which is we won't have the monies from tourism 
to support it. So the reality is, and I've always maintained this in business, that if the numbers don't make sense, the strategy doesn't make sense. And we can't rely on going back to the federal government, in my opinion, because if you follow anything about what's happening on the mainland, public transit is in a debt spiral. The 36 top major U.S. cities, starting with New York, nobody is riding on their subways or other public transportations. They are already in debt billions and billions of dollars. So I know that Andy Robbins announced a week ago that they received two P3 bids. Those will be revealed at the end of August 27th. But I think a lot hangs in the balance here as to the feasibility. So my attitude would be is if we can't afford it at this point in time, keep in mind, now this is a global pandemic that's really impacted us in Hawaii, especially because of our over-dependence on tourism. And if we can't do it and we need to stop it, then we'll re-engineer something for Middle Street and do something better than anybody even imagined with express buses and other intermodal situations, which they have elsewhere. It's not like this is something that can't be done. So we're going to just have to face the reality that we're looking at, given the economics of Hawaii now. It's very different than what I just announced five short months ago to run for mayor. All right, Rick. Uh, uh, I can't help but ask, as a political newcomer, so to speak, your first uh, elected race, is the world of politics about what you expected? Or did you come in and go, man, this is like fighting guerrilla warfare here? Uh, it's a great question. I'll tell you this, Joe. I, in my experience in all these many months now, there have been some great highs. I've met a lot of people, of course, we got precluded because of COVID, but just in the rapport, as I said, you established where people were volunteering, it's very heartwarming. So the highs are great. The lows are miserable. You know, when you, you, you know, and, and, and so every day has been game day, if I could use that analogy. And I've learned something almost every single day and we've done more things I've never done before. So I find it quite honestly exhilarating. I just wish we didn't have in the backdrop the impact of COVID-19 because it's only gotten worse by the day, by the week, by the month. And that in and of itself, given the amount of impact that it's having on the people who live here, the amount of suffering, the danger, the threat, the concerns, all of that is kind of overshadowed, um, you know, a lot of the joy, if you will. Uh, and it's also added greatly for me with a sense of responsibility in running for office here and, and becoming the mayor and what that means. Clearly, this will be the biggest leadership challenge of my life, clearly. Rick, it's just Rick, a shame that you're not a better public speaker. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think Thank I could you, ask Joe. you what's your overall view of anything, and you could talk for a half hour easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, th thank you. Well, look, I, look I, I, I love Hawaii. Hawaii has loved me back. I have my heart and soul in this. This is not just a political race for me. This is the embodiment of a lifetime of work and love in this place. And given what's at stake right now, it couldn't be any higher. So the gravitas is there. My sense of responsibility is there. So what I'm telling you is just coming from the heart, and it's coming in a very natural way, Joe. We've got, we're going to have to work through this and, and, and bring everybody together, unlike anything we've ever seen or done before. All right, Rick. Thank All you right, very much for taking much time to uh, speak with us this evening. Best to you and Karen. Joe, thank you. Thank you for the call.